So Kevin, as always, you are doing a million projects. And the first one I want to talk to you about is the procedure. It's this animated yeah. short that you did the voiceover for. What what attracted you to this uh, short film? Well, I do a lot of pro-life speaking. I mean, initially, uh, when I started, I put my book out about 11 years ago, True Strength, and initially became sort of a, a medical book in a way. I mean, it was semi-autobiographical, but it dealt with... Uh, the strokes I suffered at the end of season five on Hercules with an aneurysm I had up here on my shoulder. And uh, uh, reading the book, people tell I was conservative, people tell I was a Christian. So they said, oh, are you pro-life? I said, very much so. Then that sort of took over in Christian education. So that those things have become bigger than just talking to the medical, medical community now. And uh, it's a road I never thought I'd be going down. It's a door God opened to me that uh, has been a blessing in more ways than one. And um, so... Laura Classen and stuff that she does up there out of Canada, uh, dealing with pro-life. Uh, they approached me and said, look, we got this, uh, we got this event that happened for this, this tech guy. He was, a uh, you know, one of these, uh, sonogram guys. And, um, they sent me a story and I read his story and it made me cry reading at what he had to be forced to witness because he didn't want to be part of this. He, the other guy that usually works with his abortion doctor uh, was late or something. And so he came into work and I said, Hey, you got to go see Dr. So-and-so he went in there not knowing what he's getting himself in for. And he describes exactly what he saw with this baby trying to hide from this doctor with his forceps ripping off, you know, one arm, then a leg, then another, arm, I mean, and watching the baby just, die and the heartbeat stopping uh he became he went into the uh men's locker room there at the hospital threw up and he said i'm done i i can't work like this anymore and um it, it's incredibly powerful and we need every single person in the world pro-life or pro-choice to see this uh to wake up to the horror of what we've done over the last 50 years i mean it's really unbelievable and pathetic that we have we have brainwashed three generations now to say that this is okay. This is like uh, it's like blowing your nose. It's not a big deal. And we are murdering people. It's murder, and it 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 just makes me so incensed to think that people are so desensitized to the murder of another human being. It's unbelievable what we're doing. Well, and it's interesting because you mentioned even reading the script for the procedure, you were tearing up. You were because oh, yeah. it's it's a really and, and here's the deal. There are going to be people who say, oh, you know, it's too violent. And, and by the way, it's animated, the procedure. We've covered this over at Faithwire. Um, it's it's animated, which actually adds another layer to the intrigue of it. Um, and when you watch it, you're sucked into it because you and this was my take as I'm watching it. I wanted there to be a different ending, right? The whole time you're rooting for this baby and you're hoping for a different ending than what you know is going to happen, which which emotionally pulls you in. But what would you say to those who would say, oh, it's it's too violent. You shouldn't be showing the violence of it. How would you respond to that? Um, then I laughed at the hypocrisy of them because the same thing happened with Abby Johnson's movie, Unplanned, where they slapped an R rating on it because the abortion is so horrific. You're going, okay. We're trying to prove a point here of what you guys are saying is okay to do to another human being. So I, I think it's, I, I, I love it. I, I love the fact that they're getting out there. I hope we can get millions and millions and millions of more views. And uh, hopefully people wake up. They should have to watch this in uh, junior high, high school, and colleges across America. They should. But well, it would open their eyes to the, what's going on. Even the pro-abortion people know what they're doing is horrible. They know it. Well, and there are a lot of people who you will talk to who are pro-choice, right? But when you start to talk about what goes on in an abortion, they won't talk about it. They can't talk about it. And that always strikes me as very intriguing because if you were really okay with something, you should have no problem talking about it, right? I mean, I, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but to me, that's reality. No, that's reality. You're right. I mean, what is pro-choice? Murder murder, or, or, or to let that baby live. That's the choices they're making. And I always tell people, I say, my body, my choice. I go, no, it's not your body, because if it was your body, you would be dead. It's as simple as that. So um, I, I hope we get more and more traction out of this. I'm always amazed that you look at the people that are, are, are for killing babies. When they march on their annual march in D.C., how angry they are, how, how incredibly just loud and, and obnoxious they are. And then the, pro, the pro-life the pro people march. And it is night and day, the difference of what they're doing. They're singing, yeah. they're praying they're 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 being kind to everybody what i mean look what's going on in our world right now uh, let alone america i mean it's just incredible what we're seeing happening around the world well let's talk about america because you are somebody who is very vocal on issues that are going on today obviously we're talking about one of the biggest ones right now this issue of abortion 
from what we saw in this election. A lot of people were expecting this big red wave, this big red tsunami, and that didn't quite happen. There have been victories for conservatives around the country, but uh, one of the big issues that popped up was abortion in a lot of these exit polls and a lot of people on the left sort of using that to win in the election. What was your reaction to that? Um, really just sad. I mean, I, I think that we've raised generations now in a very to be very ignorant, to be very uneducated to the realities of what's going on in the world right now. How do you fight back to that? Uh, once again, it's got to be through education, but we got to get education out of the hands of the government. I, I honestly think that uh, I don't I don't mind my tax dollars going to education, but I'd rather have it to go to private businesses that run run uh, education now. Because this whole thing about tenure, this whole thing about, I mean, look what teachers are doing right now. When I was in school, and I'm sure the same for you, I didn't have teachers tell me how to vote. I didn't tell teachers tell me to believe in God or not believe in God. They taught math, they taught science, they taught what government, whatever it was I was taking. I didn't have that even through college. I didn't have that. And now it's everywhere right now. It's, it's starting as low as, as you know grade school of what were the indoctrination process. You're getting teachers now coming out on on you know Twitter and Facebook and and gleefully laughing about how they're indoctrinating kids and uh you know praising certain lifestyle styles and things like that i it's just it's just amazing to me how far this country's gone down and people actually believe like socialism and communism is a better way to go something like 64 percent of 18 to 29 year olds voted majority blue in every single state yeah yeah i mean what that... does that say what does that say there's a lot of work to be done. Um, they the need to go to Venezuela. Side. I want them all to take a, a year in Venezuela or even Russia, for that matter, or North Korea or Cuba. I keep telling people nobody's taking boats from Key West to Cuba. Have you guys ever paid attention to that? Nobody's <laughs> rushing the border from America to get down into Mexico. There are reasons for that. So final <laughs> final question for you, because you you and your wife, Sam Sorbo, um, you guys do a lot of amazing stuff, but you're actually doing this really cool trip to Israel. Can you talk a little bit about that? This is our second go around. We did it in 2019. We cap it at 60 people. We're doing it again this year. I think we've got 35 signed up. It's not a cheap trip, of course. We're going to Israel is not cheap, and but we have the three best guides you can possibly get. We got them back again this time. I was just in Israel to do another documentary this past May. Um, it, it deals with the, uh, through geo, uh, archaeological digs, the search for the Ark of the Covenant, and also dealing with the uh, tabernacle. It was unbelievable. It's going to come out early next year. So I met a couple of extra locations we're going to go to this time around. So please go to SorboIsraelTrip.com. That's SorboIsraelTrip.com. Sign up. Trust, trust me, it's amazing. We're going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, and people will absolutely love the history that they're going to learn of that area. And people get to hang out with you guys, which is pretty cool. Exactly. So, there you go. We, put on, we put on good stuff. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely be there. We're taking the whole family again. And uh, like I said, we, we we made very good friends with the people I went with last time. We keep in touch with them. In fact, one of the ladies was at our house here just a couple of days ago. But um, it's it's an amazing trip. So you can also get more information on SorboStudios.com for a lot of other things coming down the pipeline. And I do have three movies coming out. Let me give a quick plug for them. They're coming Go for out it. Here, January, February, we got Miracle in East Texas that I directed. We've got Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist. I directed that one. And I'm in the Reagan movie with Dennis Quaid. I play his, uh, he's a president and I play his pastor. That's amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to all those and also having you back to talk about that documentary when it hits. Cool. It's going to be Love cool. It. All right. Love thanks it. so much. All right. Appreciate it.